see it looks very similar to our high resolution mesh. It's got all the details, all the scales, all the bumps, everything. And there's the wireframe. And now if we go to the texture editor, we can see if we go to normals, we can see this is the normal map that it baked out. See all of our wrinkles, and all of the cracks, and all of our sort of vine details here on the gel sacks, everything. All right, and finally, if we go to the paint objects tab down here, we have something called main body. Now this is this particular paint object, and we're gonna bring in another one of these in a moment. So I'm going to hide that for now, and I'm gonna bring back my voxel objects because we're going back to the read topology room and now we need to bake out everything else. So I'll hide the main body. And then I'll change my UV set to extremities up here. And we will begin this process anew. Even though we have multiple retopo objects here in this panel, when we go to bake a normal map, it will affect all of them together. So first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of all these spheres of influence because they are no longer useful to us and they're just cluttering up our scene. So let's preview the outer shell first. We can probably make the outer shell scan depth a little bit narrower. Okay, maybe 3.25. Three point five. There we go. That will accommodate any everything and nothing's okay. It looks like on the teeth here, everything it's might be overlapping with some of the teeth a bit. So we'll have to adjust that. But now, if we go to the inner shell on the proboscis, it's actually looking okay. But on the wing, it's going to need a lot of work. I'm going to take my scan depth and I'm going to drop it down to maybe two. There we go, that's actually looking a lot better. It's even looking good on our teeth, maybe 1.75. All right, on the back of our fins though, this is, this is a problem. It's not going in far enough. And on the tips here, it's going in too far. So I'll just add in some spheres of influence and we'll be able to bake this out too. All right, so now that that's done, we can hit OK and we'll be presented with the same options. We again do not want to bake local occlusion. And this time we want to add it to a new UV set called Extremities and it's only going to be a 1024 map this time, not a 2048 map. I'll hit OK. And I'll give it a few seconds. Once again, I'll hide the uh, the box tree, and I'll go to my paint room. And now we have we have two separate UV sets. If I go to normals, I have body and extremities. If I go to extremities, you'll see new UV sets have been made. New normals have been painted. And as you can tell in our model, they look pretty good. Now if I go to paint objects, we have three new paint objects here to represent our retopology groups. And if I bring back main body, then there is our model. Only now it is a low res model with normal maps applied. Now I'm not going to texture this model just yet because I still haven't decided on exactly what color scheme I want to use for these creatures in the game they're going for, or they're going to, but I will tell you exactly how to export these two normal maps. So real quick, if we go to textures, 
export one export tangent space normal map so that's the one that says low poly mesh not the world space just the tangent space it's going to ask you which uv set you want to export so i'll do body first and then i'll do extremities so i'll hit so i can hit okay and then under textures i'll create a new folder for this guy And I'll call this one underscore n for normal. And I like to save them out as targets. It'll ask you if you want to fill in the empty parts of the texture. That will basically add a little bit of padding to the normal map at the very edges of your model. And I usually hit yes just in case there's some problem with the object, with the 3D object export, and the UVs get slightly misaligned it will make any seams that show up a little bit less noticeable. So I'll hit yes. And you can do the exact same thing for the extremities UV set. And then finally to get the object itself out of 3D code, we go up to file actually yeah file export objects and textures and we're just going to load models obj and that will export all of our paint objects together now in this case, we actually don't want to export any of the textures. We just want the model by itself. So I'll hit OK. And then we would have and then we would have this OBJ file that we can then import into some other 3D software. All right, so that's going to do it for this tutorial. That's basically the workflow that I typically use for sculpting and retopologizing and UV mapping an organic asset inside of 3D Coat. I hope you learned something. I hope you find it useful in your own projects. And thank you for watching.